Evening. Today is the 4th of August, about 8.34 p.m. here in New York, and uh, we will be starting our first um, session of uh, the SOAP UI, um, which is the web service testing training. This is the August batch of 2015. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome you all. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, today is uh, going to be uh, our first session, um, so I'm going to be keeping it um, as an um, open for all, meaning anybody uh, can be a part of it. Anybody can ask any question, um, of course, related to SOAP UI. Um, to begin the session, uh, I'm, I'm going to be starting off uh, by introducing you to um, what um, uh, we will be doing as a part of uh, this uh, four weeks course, um, who we are, and uh, particularly, um, you know, and in terms of what we will be covering as a part of this course is uh, basically what I would be, um, you know, talking to you about in the first couple of minutes, and then uh, we're going to be getting started with uh, the actual course. Um, there are uh, two ways uh, you could interact with me um, while we are in this session. Right now, I have uh, muted you all, um, so in case uh, you need to ask me any question, um, just click on that um, uh, little icon of, uh, of a hand, and that's going to flash next to your name, and I will unmute you, and then we can talk. The other way is um, you can type your questions, uh, your concerns, your um, comments um, in that uh, chat box uh, that you see up there. And uh, uh, if I am in the middle of uh, um, something, I'm going to just finish my uh, thought and then I will come back and then address your um, you know, uh, concerns or your questions. Um, as far as uh, this training is concerned, uh, we will be meeting on uh, Tuesdays. and uh, uh, Thursdays uh, from 8.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, <clears throat> we will continue um, for eight session. As uh, you all know that each session is going to be two hour long. And um, at the tail end of each session, we're going to have a, a sort of like a Q&A. Um, so anything um, that you need to ask, uh, of course, uh, um, that is a very good time, um, but uh, don't keep yourself to, um, you know, waiting till the end of the session to ask a question. If you need to ask it uh, during the session, feel free to ask during the sessions as well. Now, um, uh, I see um, Jimmy raising his uh, hand, so I don't know if he has a question. So I'm just going to unmute you um, in case if you have a question. So uh, go ahead with your question if you have one. Yes, I do have a question. Um, I just want to ask, when someone asks a question, does everyone else is going to hear the questions, or are you the only one who can listen to the question? No. Um, the uh, a quick, uh, short answer to that is uh, now we are hearing everyone in this session is hearing your baby's voice. Uh, so uh, when you ask a question, um, that is going to be for everyone. Um, so all of us will be hearing your question. Now, if you just need to uh, ask me a question, you can type it in the chat. Um, and depending on the question, I will either read it out loud or I will just answer you by typing back uh, to it. So that way it's going to be hidden from everybody else um, if you don't need uh, others to know. But if you want others to hear about your question, then... Um, uh, sure, right now everyone is hearing uh, what you are saying, so it's going to be for all uh, who are there in this session. All right? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so um, now in terms of uh, what um, training right is and uh, who I am and how we'll be running this course now, uh, training right, as you can see uh, from the website, uh, we are uh, pretty popular uh, with um, automation testing courses. We've been providing this uh, training for a little over uh, five, uh, six. This is our sixth year now, and um, probably we have trained thousands of students all over uh, the world. Um, so our majority of our students are from United States and uh, Canada, but uh, we also have students in UK and. Uh, um, as far as Australia and New Zealand. Um, so uh, this is an online course, so it's going to uh, basically um, uh, every session of this uh, 
is going to be uh, recorded. So at any given time, if you cannot um, attend a session, um, not much is lost because uh, you could, uh, at your uh, first uh, convenience, at your leisure, you could go back and then watch the videos because we will be providing you uh, the videos of uh, every session that we, we cover. Now, as uh, I was stating that uh, we are um, sort of like your one-stop shop. If you need to train yourself in automation, there are uh, many um, tools that we provide training on. Um, so uh, trainingright.com is the site that you could go and then look for. We have different packages and whatnot. So without going into the details, I would um, just simply invite you to go to trainingright.com for uh, the details as what we cover and whatnot. Now, uh, particularly about this course, uh, this course, like any other course, is going to be um, about uh, four weeks uh, in duration, meaning we would be meeting twice a week um, and each session will be two hours. And as you can feel, I'm repeating myself here. So um, for more information, just go to the website and then find some information, um, you know, anything that you're looking for there. If not, then you can always um, write to us and the details are right there on the top. You can call us and whatnot. Now, um, as far as uh, I am concerned, I will be your trainer. My name is Erfan, spelled as I-E-R-F-A-N. And uh, I have about uh, 21 uh, years of experience. Uh, um, um, <laughs> a lot of people they say that you are an old person. Well, um, I um, finished my master's um, in the year 1996. Uh, um, and since then, I've been working for um, many uh, different corporations here in uh, uh, United States. Um, I have also worked in uh, UK for a while, uh, particularly in an area called Cardiff in the South Wales. And um, my expertise um, uh, is basically software development. And uh, uh, I have uh, uh, lately been uh, working as the director where I have a team of 23 people that I manage. And uh, um, there are a lot of uh, testers in there. So in my Previous life, I've been um, a developer, an architect, and uh, I've been uh, uh, an automated tester for a while. Uh, and uh, uh, we have um, been uh, working on different uh, projects, um, mostly here in the uh, United States, and um, particularly with uh, the federal government and all that. And uh, uh, my uh, experience with SOAP UI is uh, for a little over like uh, five years now. And uh, since past five years, we've been doing uh, SOAP UI. I've been uh, working on it. I've been uh, teaching uh, SOAP UI. So this course uh, is going to be pretty intense, uh, meaning that I'm going to get you started um, in the beginning with uh, um, uh, some simple examples and all that. But then uh, very soon, uh, we're going to get into some uh, serious, um, um, you know, stuff. And uh, uh, for those of you who uh, have watched some of the videos uh, uh, and, I mean, who have registered with us and we have shared the videos uh, um, with you, so, and if you have watched those videos, then you know the intensity of, uh, um, you know, what uh, uh, the content that we cover as a part of this course. So, uh, in brief, um, you will find yourself, uh, um, you know, working um, writing some code because automation testing is all about writing code. So if you are coming from a background where you have not done any uh, programming in the past, uh, um, you might have to put in a, some little extra effort because uh, in this course we will be doing programming, but it's not going to be on day one or two. Um, somewhere around day day three, day four, we're going to be getting started with the programming. So like any uh, automated um, software tester, you will also be expected to uh, write uh, scripts, to build scripts, and that's basically what you would be doing as a part of this course. Now, uh, SOAP UI is a tool. It is a tool, meaning um, uh, this tool basically uh, is used uh, to uh, do uh, things like, uh, um, hang on for a second, somebody had asked me to spell my name. So uh, that's uh, how 
I uh, spell my name. Okay, so um, basically SOAP UI is a tool uh, and this uh, tool comes from a company called SmartBear and SmartBear um, when they started off um, uh, this tool going back again in the year 2010 2011 was was sort of like in its infancy but now it had um, um, pretty much captured uh, a huge market when it comes to um, web um, service testing so if there is a tool out there that can do uh, some real web service testing then this is the tool now soap ui comes in two in two forms there is on uh, there's an open source there's an soap ui open source um and then there is a soap ui pro now of course from the name itself uh pro uh is uh, uh, a licensed product meaning that you have to purchase the product uh, whereas uh, the soap ui open source is free so um the company where you would go to download it is uh, soapui.org is the site now soap ui is one of the tools that uh, a smart bear owns so smart bear is the parent company and it has multiple tools that uh, they provide training on um tools that uh, does uh, functional testing of uh, uh, client server applications functional testing for web applications mobile applications and whatnot um, but um, we are looking at uh, particularly at the web service testing. So uh, things can be downloaded from this website, soapui.org. Now, if you scroll down a little bit on this, uh, you will see that uh, here is from where you could download, uh, you know, basically your software. And uh, as I was uh, stating that uh, it comes as a free version and it comes as an um, pro version. Pro version is the license, uh, meaning you have to pay um about uh 400 dollars uh i guess um you know uh to purchase it now um you and i um particularly you not me um if you don't want to you can you can just download it um and go through the evaluation um you know period meaning that you don't have to buy the product and uh uh, basically, uh, the product is going to expire after 15 days, and uh, I will um, give you some ideas as to how to keep using it, um, um, because uh, basically, uh, you could have something like a virtual uh, VMware, and then you could be downloading on the VMware and then running it. So when the time is right, I'm going to be uh, sharing with you uh, stuff like that. Um, as of now, um, this is the place from where you could download. So as far as downloading is concerned, um, you can see here there's a soap ui and then there is a ready api ready api is basically the newest uh, version of the soap ui and uh, what they have done is uh, they've taken <clears throat> um uh, and added a lot more uh, features to the ready api and uh, so our training is going to cover uh, everything uh, we will be covering the soap ui open source we'll be covering the uh, ready api which is the soap ui pro version so we'll be covering both of it now um i was talking about programming and i i um, was definitely expecting uh, uh can you provide me a pin for a dial in it should be in your it should be in your what's i'm call in your email or it should be in your when you click the telephone when you click when you go in there or uh, probably he cannot even hear me so <laughs> give me a second i just gotta type uh um click on the telephone uh and you shall see the audio uh pin all right so uh okay so because he can't hear so i gotta uh, just type it um you can basically get connected uh if you have a microphone and a speaker on your uh, machine or you need to dial in with a phone and uh probably he doesn't have a, a speaker on his machine now uh you would say who in the world would not have a speaker on their computers these days uh well um uh, there will be some okay so uh coming back um and discussing about um uh, which versions of uh, soap ui will be using we'll be working on both 
we'll be using the SOAP UI Pro version and we'll be using the SOAP UI open source. Now, if you ask me what exactly is the difference between the two, I would say that uh, this is not the time to uh, discuss about it because uh, you will be, uh, you know, because if I'm going to talk about the differences, uh, um, we have absolutely no idea of uh, what these tools are at this minute and uh, how can we discuss about the differences between them. Now, a couple of things about uh, SOAP UI. There is a, a certification uh, from the vendor, uh, so you can get certified in the SOAP UI uh, Pro. Now, how much of uh, value does it have? Every certification will have some value. So. Um, you know, it, it, it won't hurt uh, for you to go and then, uh, you know, get the certification. But uh, um, uh, majority of the times, um, you know, um, getting a certification is uh, extremely, uh, you know, easy affair than actually knowing the product. Because getting the certification is uh, just answering some questions, multiple, uh, you know, uh, question and answers, and then you just... Uh, um, go through it and then you would they ask you a question you you click on an answer so um, I for one um, you know would uh, go and hire somebody who has a real hands-on experience uh, rather than have a certification again coming back to um, they're going to be paying you uh, 60 to 70 dollars uh, per hour uh, depending on uh, where you live uh, um, basically, that's the average, um, you know, hourly rate uh, you get paid uh, if you know the in and out of, uh, you know, web service testing. And expect no less than that um, when you finish this course because that's exactly what uh, I will be preparing you for. I'll be preparing you so that you know everything, the in and out of the tool as far as, uh, you know, uh, basically testing the applications, the web application or the web services uh, rather. And um, um, again, depending on the East Coast or the West Coast, you could expect that kind of a money. Let's say if you're in Boston, if you're in uh, New York, if you're in Connecticut, if you're, um, let's say, uh, San Francisco, if you're like uh, any uh, part of the West Coast, Seattle, uh, expect that kind of money. If you're in the middle America, um, you know, you don't get paid that uh, Hi, so you we are talking about somewhere around like fifty, fifty-two dollars per hour. That's uh, probably would be, would be the going rate that you should be expecting after you finish this course, provided you listen to any and everything that we tell you to do. The most important thing that can measure your success if you are going to be a part of this course is uh, you have to complete the assignments. So I'm going to be giving you eight assignments as a part of this course. So you are expected to finish all those eight assignments. In the, in the beginning, the assignment number one and number two is going to be pretty straightforward because uh, we don't have much um, there. Uh, but starting from uh, day three through day eight, it's going to be pretty um, you know, challenging uh, stuff that we will be covering as a part of this course. And uh, the reason I uh, will be doing that is only uh, because uh, once you are uh, working on a real project, uh, you should absolutely have, uh, you know, no fear and you should have absolutely no doubts about your ability to, uh, you know, perform um, because you would have done pretty much everything like that here uh, through the assignments. So we're going to be dealing with some uh, real life scenarios as a part of this course and I will introduce you to uh, different types of web services. So um, you know, you got to just sit back, relax, uh, watch what we are doing, and uh, more importantly, uh, participate in it by completing the assignments. Now, um, the uh, videos, you asked me a question like, um, you know, when will these videos be? Well, basically, uh, as I am conducting this session, as uh, I was saying in the beginning, that uh, it will be uh, recording everything. So, Around 10.30, when the session is going to conclude, uh, we will process the video. And it takes about a good 45 minutes for the video to get processed. And then we will upload it. And then within 45 minutes to an hour after conclusion of the session, the videos will be available for you to watch. And you will have access to the videos for a year. And uh, you should be able to watch. And uh, we will give you at least three different sets of videos so that you, you can see a variety when it comes to testing of these web services. All right. Okay. Now, with that said, um, uh, now I am going to very briefly show you where 
uh, all the videos are uh, so that you can have access to it. Of course, the paid members uh, will have access uh, to these videos that I'm talking about. But uh, I'll just give you a glimpse of these videos. So uh, you will be logging in um, to your own accounts uh, after you make uh, the payments and all that. We will give you access to this uh, uh, screencast and you will have the videos here. So uh, I, I should remember my own uh, username and password, right? That would help. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm logged in. And as you can uh, see here, uh, we have so many courses. So, uh, you know, depending on what course you are in, you will have access to the videos. Uh, uh, just to give you an idea, we uh, let's scroll down to SOPY. So um, every month we conduct uh, this course. So we will be giving you uh, access to, let's say, SOPY April 2015 batch. As you can see, there will be eight videos in there, right? Uh, day one through day eight, day two, day three, day four, uh, day eight. So they, they're going to be eight videos. And uh, each video is on an average, if you see the length of the video, is going to be about like two hour uh, long. This is two hour, nine minutes, two hours, and uh, two hours. And uh, this probably is like a little less. Uh, so around on an average of two hours is what we will be. Some videos are two and a half hours. This one is two and a half hours. So anyway, so that's basically what you're going to be seeing. So I want you to go in the order um, and watch day one through day eight. Uh, now, um, so you will have access to the videos. You will also have access to um, our uh, groups. So I'm just going to take you to groups.google.com. Um, and uh, if uh, you are logged in, you should be seeing your group so let me just log in and i'll be showing you your groups and you sh you should uh, get an idea of uh, what basically can you expect from those uh, groups so i am logged in and once i'm logged in i am the admin of the training right group so i will see all the groups in here as you can see I'm, I'm uh, looking at Ruby Cucumber, Selenium with C Sharp, and uh, Advanced QTP, and then I'm looking at uh, Java for Testers, JMeter. Likewise, um, we go into, so you should have access to the SOAP UI, Web Service Testing Group. Okay, like you, there are hundreds uh, uh, of and thousands of students uh, are here that, you, that have uh, taken this course. So uh, what is the purpose of this group? So let's say if you have uh, a, a particular question about uh, a data driven uh, framework right um, so uh, you are going to go in there and then look for it and as you can see a lot of people in the in the past they they would have certain questions about it so their their uh, questions are going to be in here and then you can look into things like that so to uh, let me just do excel and uh, now as an example this is this is not the complete code but then this is this is some code as as you can see there is some code in here and then some of the you know uh, one of the student he had asked he or she had asked uh, i downloaded the jxl folder da 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 da, da. <clears throat> but i have an issue i'm not able to execute the code uh, using this uh, soap ui free version can you help me so uh, the code and all that everything you would be able to find in here because we post things in here more importantly it's going to be covered in the session as well so you can be a part of that and you can ask those questions now uh, while we are in the session of course i will take your questions if you have uh, um, but uh, try and understand sometimes we have about on an average uh, uh, is about a dozen to 15 uh, students who are a part of uh, every course. Uh, so if I go with, uh, for easy math, if I go with, uh, let's say, 10, and if each student asks um, uh, some questions uh, and it takes me about uh, a minute or two to answer that, uh, and uh, if there are 10 students asking these questions uh, during the session, so it will take, uh, uh, you know, two minutes per um per student per question so and there are 10 students so 20 minutes there and if you ask two questions 40 minutes there so what i would suggest is uh, just wait it out uh, unless and until you cannot proceed you have uh, 
no understanding of what I am doing and then you cannot proceed. Um, and it is, uh, it has become sort of like mandatory for you to ask a question. Otherwise, uh, um, I would suggest that we wait it out uh, with your questions till the end of the session so that that will give me uh, an ample time to cover a lot of stuff uh, that I intend to cover as a part of this course. All right. Okay. With that said, let's see what we are going to be covering as a part of this course. I'm not going to be reading bullet by bullet, but I want you to go and then look into this uh, uh, under courses. You have uh, SOAP UI. So just go take a look at that and you will see the contents of the course. Now, uh, we will um, try our best to stick to every bullet item that you see in there. But uh, chances are I might be covering a uh, lot more than what is uh, listed here. Um, and the way I'm going to be doing that is, uh, of course, whatever I could do through the sessions, I would do it. Otherwise, you we will you'll also have access to uh, the videos uh, to watch, right? Okay. Um, so with that said, let's uh, get started. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free. I see Jimmy asking a question, so I will unmute you. Go ahead with your question, and then I will start uh, today's session. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Jimmy. Um, no, no, sorry, I didn't. I didn't raise the question. It was. I think it was from before. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, let's um, let's um, get going. Anybody else? Any questions? Anything before we start? Okay. If you don't have any questions, um, we're gonna start off uh, by downloading the software. So I'm gonna go here to Soap UI and. Uh, we will download. Uh, I'm going to be downloading the open source today, and uh, the pro version will download tomorrow um, or, or in the next class. So the for the open source, you're going to go to soapui.org, and you will be downloading it from there. So uh, this is I have shared the address with all of you. Um, and to download, you got to look into what is your operating system. Now, fortunately, unfortunately, as a part of this uh, uh, course here, we're going to be covering the Windows. So uh, even though this can work on Linux and Mac and all that, but uh, we uh, are going to be focusing primarily on Windows and I will be downloading it. So there's a Windows installer. So you could just go and click on that and then that should let you download. And as you can see, there's a SOAP UI. Uh, open source um, is a 5.2 and it's about like 116 megs, right? So we could download and we could install it. So I uh, request you to uh, organize your stuff on your machine. So um, on your machine, I want you to create a folder and the folder that you would create, uh, you can name it as, uh, let's say, as a SOAP UI or SOAP UI training or something like that. So I have this uh, folder and inside the folder, I have created a lot more uh, other folders in here, right? Okay, so I want you to go and then create that folder. And inside that, if you see, I've created a folder called SOAP UI projects underscore project, SOAP UI underscore software. So underscore software, if you see in the previous classes, uh, this is a newer machine that I have. So I have downloaded these softwares. Uh, so uh, somewhere around February and May and all that, I've downloaded this software. And these, the difference between this Ready API and the SOAP uh, uh, UI is a SOAP UI are basically the open source and the Ready API is the pro version of it. So I already have uh, SOAP UI 64 5.1.2. So the, the one that I'm, I'm going to download right now uh, is uh, 5.2.0. So let's see if I already have it. If I have it, I'm not going to install. So I don't have it. I have the older ones, 5.1.2, 5.1.3. I don't have the newer one. So I can just go ahead and then I could download it. So here I go. And uh, uh, probably it's going to take, uh, um, uh, it already downloaded it. So show downloads and I'm just going to open the containing folder and I will go cut it from here and come back and then paste it, paste it somewhere here. All right. So that way I know that I have the, I have the software 5.2.0 on my machine, on my machine. I, I already uh, have, uh, I already have this, uh, I upgraded it. So I, I already have it. So I'm not going to go through the installation process unless uh you know you really want to see it it's it's pretty straightforward if you just double click on that you click on run it's just gonna go and then you just click 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 and it is going to go ahead and then 
um, basically uh, install it for you. So while it is installing, uh, let me uh, go over a few things here while it goes through the installation. Again, installation is no big deal, uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, so you keep clicking next, 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 and it, it does the, you have to accept the license. After you accept the license, basically it is telling you where it is going to go and then install it. And as you can see, it is installing it in uh, my C drive program file, smart bear as the folder and soap UI 5.2.2. So that's basically where it goes and installs. Um, now, uh, just for the heck of it, take everything, just check on everything because uh, um, I want you to have pretty much everything. So accept this agreement and uh, even the tutorials, if you need to, uh, not that you need it, but uh, if you want, you can have, uh, you can refer to them. So here we go. It's going to create a shortcut on the start menu folder for it. And it also going to uh, create a shortcut uh, uh, and on the desktop, it will create an icon. So that's about it. The, the, now it's going to go and then install it. So while it is getting installed, um, understand the fact that uh, you uh, have uh, two types of, you have two types of uh, SOAP UI. SOAP UI. And this is the uh, non-pro, right? Non-pro version of the SOAP UI, which is, Non-Pro is basically your uh, open source, meaning no, no fee. And then, of course, there is a SOAP UI Pro, right? SOAP UI Pro is the base engine, and through that, they have created the newer uh, version of that, which is the Ready API. So uh, if you... Uh, if you if we go back in time in the year 2000 um i would say 11 through 2014 soap ui pro was there last year they came out with uh, ready api in fact uh december of last year they released the ready api since then we have the newest version is the ready api so uh you will be seeing everything you'll be seeing this you'll be seeing that and you will be seeing uh, the the ready API. So today I'm going to get you started with the SOAP UI uh, Pro and then tomorrow class and the next class we will be doing the ready API. So uh, the difference is uh, again one is the professional version um, and the other one. So it says that uh, there are some files already there so do you want to override? Yeah I said I want to override and I will I don't want to see the release notes uh, I want to start so I just hit finish and it's starting my uh, SOAP UI, which is my smart bear. Okay. Now, like any um, tool, this tool can be a little bit uh, overwhelming if you look at it for the very first time, uh, because uh, there's uh, quite a bit that is happening uh, inside this tool. So we're going to take step by step um, and, um, you know, uh, we will be, again, uh, taking an approach uh, wherein we're going to start uh, to crawl first and then uh, we will walk and then we'll start running. So in the beginning, I'll take some baby steps to introduce you to these things. Uh, my router is blocking, my firewall is blocking it. So it asked me to allow the access. So here we go. We allow the access. Okay. Like any other uh, tool, if you look at it, there are uh, certain things that uh, I need to highlight. And uh, that is you have the menu on the top here. This is, these are the menu items on the top. And as we progress in time, I'm going to be showing you uh, almost everything that is in here as what we can do with those uh, menu items. Now, uh, along with the menu, you also have uh, a toolbar. This is basically your toolbar. And in the toolbar, uh, it's, it's like a uh, one-click thing. Rather than, uh, you know, if you have to go and create a project, uh, and I'll tell you in a minute what a project is, you have to go file and then you have to uh, create an empty project or you create this project. So you are taking one or two or three steps in here. Rather than doing that, this is just telling you to create a project right here. So uh, like in any uh, particular tool, uh, this toolbar helps you to reduce the number of steps that are needed for you to um, uh, complete a particular task. Okay, now, uh, important thing that you have to uh, look into is uh, there is there is this left-hand side and then there is this right-hand side, right? Okay, now, on the right-hand side, right, on the right-hand side, um, now, you, you are looking at the SOAP UI starter page. <coughs> like any other starter page, 
they are trying to uh, sort of like advertise uh, the features or the benefits of this tool and you could get a little more of this by clicking in here and then it'll uh, take you to their website and uh, you know let you know more about it so if you need to do that of course feel free to you know explore it i'm just gonna kill that so that i see a clean slate here so uh, i have i have on this side as you can see this is the left hand side and this is the top portion of the left hand side and uh, this is of course the bottom portion of the left hand side and then i have a huge right side right okay now um, I want to draw your attention to the fact that um, what you see on the left hand side here, right, is is based. What you see on the left hand side is uh, uh, everything about, mm, uh, you know, the projects that you would be working on. So the there are certain things that you need to know about uh, SOAP UI, uh, the the hierarchy inside SOAP UI, how things work inside SOAP UI. You will uh, be hearing some buzzwords right now. I will be sharing with you some buzzwords. And so um, uh, it might not really sit too well with you hearing it uh, without me showing it to you. But uh, uh, let me just uh, tell you that uh, inside SOAP UI, there is going to be something called up something called a project right so a project is um, is an area where you would go and do what do the testing testing of what of your web services so there are going to be uh, two types of web services there is XML based web service and then there is a rest rest web services now again we're not going to be discussing right now uh, about the differences between XML and the rest web services uh, suffice to know that there are two types of web services uh, one is the XML which is soap soap based web services and the other one is the rest uh, where our focus will be on something called JSON all right okay again what is JSON what is soap is coming up uh, very soon but so uh, we will be creating projects to test web services and there are two types of web services so either we will be creating a project to test XML based web services or we'll be creating a project to test uh, rest uh, web services in a company if I have to put a number I would say that um, it's almost about about 50 50 when it comes to uh, XML and rest web services now uh, the the new uh, the new uh, testing or the new development is leaning more towards rest now so rest is basically going to be um the way uh, most of the companies will be building their web services uh, and because there are some serious advantages advantages of using rest services again we're going to be discussing about what those advantages are uh, you know at a later point in this course but i'm just trying to give you an idea that uh, uh, you know there is an xml web services and there will be rest web services and the industry the world is leaning uh, towards uh, you know rest web services a lot of uh, work is being done on the rest services so chances are you will be working uh, quite a bit on the rest services now having said that learning rest services literally will become a piece of cake if you have the idea of the xml web services so we're going to start off the course with the xml web services and i will be teaching you things in xml web, web services and after learning it in xml applying it for rest services is literally literally uh, and i'm not exaggerating is is a 10 15 minutes thing so if you understand everything in here applying to the rest services is is no biggie right in in a very short span of time you're going to become an expert in the rest services as well provided you have a good foundation on the xml based web services so our focus is going to be on the in the beginning to lay out a strong foundation would be on xml but a lot of course uh, again we'll be dealing with the rest services as well okay so when it comes to xml uh, web services or rest web, uh, rest web services uh, you test them by creating a project either an xml project right or a rest project so when you create a project basically uh, you will have like 
lot of uh, files and everything right so they need to be saved inside what is called a workspace so there will be a workspace workspace is an area where you will be saving your projects right you'll be saving your projects and projects uh, will have uh, all the files that you need so workspace is the place where you will be uh, saving now when it comes to uh, some buzzwords that you would be hearing you would be hearing things like uh, uh, soap you'll be hearing things like uh, interface you'll be hearing things like uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, gosh some sometimes um, <laughs> it it, it uh, basically skips my mind but um, you will be hearing so you will be hearing interfaces and what these things are these things are nothing but these things are going to be uh, exposing you right exposing to you uh, the the details of your of the web service that we need to test right okay so an interface is something that will expose to you the details of now details what do you mean by details of course we're going to be coming back and then discussing about what those details are but these uh, you have to get uh, some idea of uh, you know how to explore or how to interact with the interface of a web service all right okay now um you would say you are talking about interface of a web service uh, or the soap or a workspace i have no idea what a web service is forget about all of these things i don't even know what is a web service so can you talk a little bit about what is a web service all right okay so we're going to start off with uh, discussing about what a web service is now before i get into discussing what is a web service let's see if uh, there's a question here that uh, we need to interact with uh, so uh, Tofik, so I will unmute you. Go ahead if you have a question. Uh, if you have a question, I'll take your question. Otherwise, I will um, continue to. Okay, so since there is not a question from him, I am going to um, continue. So let's uh, discuss about what a web service is and what is uh, the need for us to test a web service. Okay, now if you if you know software applications right uh, we are here to basically test some web services but before we test web services we got to know uh, what are the different types of software applications as you all know a uh, long time back there were uh, mainframe applications right now nobody deals with mainframe applications at least uh, not in quantity maybe uh, very uh, few of those are hanging out there uh, but uh, you know they they were extremely popular in 70s and 80s but no longer um, but there there are software applications that run on mainframes uh, but we have nothing to do with it so we will not even be dealing with that there will be something called client server applications right client server applications are uh, basically desktop applications meaning that uh, a company wants uh, their employees to um, do some back office work uh, meaning um, if they want to deal with the inventory uh, which a customer need not worry about i mean for a, a customer um, depending on what this business is uh, they need not worry about the inventory of it uh, because uh, uh, a customer basically if you take an e-commerce application his or her um, you know primary uh, you know engagement with the website is to um, you know find out if uh, uh, something is available or not so they will be coming to the website searching for a product and after they search for a product they basically would be selecting that um, product to purchase it and then they go through the uh, process of uh, you know putting it into a uh, a shopping cart and uh, if there is a modification that needs to a shopping cart they go through that process and then eventually they will be checking out that uh, uh, card uh, and that involves uh, you to uh, put in some information about your um, payment uh, that is a credit card or whatnot or check or 
uh, you know, bitcoins or anything like that. So you will be doing things like that and then basically shipping information and then expect that product to be shipped to your place. So that's uh, an e-commerce uh, way of uh, dealing with a shopping cart application for a customer. So the customer is not necessarily too concerned about uh, if, you know, the thing that he's ordering, uh, what is happening at the back end of Amazon? Do they have only five in stock or five million in stock or who okay. cares? So you don't have. So uh, you don't have much uh, to do as a customer about it. But uh, the employees of uh, Amazon to make it run uh, smoothly, they have to uh, take care of so many things. So they have their internal systems uh, that they could deal with. Uh, so those are basically the client server systems. Then uh, there is something called uh, uh, the web. Uh, web applications so the web application is something that runs in a in a browser right uh, these they run in a browser um so uh still we have i have not discussed anything about web services so far i'm just giving you some examples of the types of application and then there is there is something called mobile applications right okay so whether it is a client server, whether it is a web, whether it is a mobile and even to a cer certain extent uh, whether it's a mainframe now it is not a single entity so let's if i take uh, you fill in the blank it doesn't really matter to me if you talk about uh, amazon or if you talk about any other entity as such uh, the bigger point here is uh, their applications their applications are not standalone meaning that it's not like they are uh, working by themselves they have to interact with with the other systems as well so as an example, uh, Amazon, what, what's, what's the, uh, what is the uh, behavior you expect of Amazon is? I mean, they make money by selling products, right, uh, that people buy. Uh, but part of their, part of their uh, business is also to make sure that you get that product delivered in, uh, to your door right so uh, right now believe it or not i mean they are looking at uh, drones as the possibility to and you might have heard it uh, quite a bit in the news uh, as the possibility to deliver their their products right now this is in distant future probably like in the year 2016 17 18 this might come so why talk about something which is not even there today so let's talk about how amazon uh, delivers the product to you uh, you would say uh, probably ups or FedEx, right, or or who else? Uh, the regular, uh, you know, your mail. Uh, what's what's the um, what's the regular mail? Uh, U.S. mail, right? U.S. mail. So, uh, or uh, depending on international, they might do DHL or, or whatnot, right? Okay. So, Amazon has to deal with a customer who uh, will be going to their website, Amazon.com right and the customer goes and then selects a product buys a product and all that the customer uh, might make a selection that he wants it uh, through ups or through fedex right but it stops there i mean the customer is done he pays and it's done now it's amazon's headache to make sure that they take the the item they take whatever it is right uh, from wherever their warehouse is from wherever their warehouse is they should inform uh, that it should be picked up right uh, by and imagine that this is this is a truck right you can understand how bad my drawing is it is really bad so um, and then it is finally uh, delivered to your to your house right so you as a customer you are unaware of what is happening behind the scenes but Amazon systems, they, the systems, they have to be, they have to be inter, interconnected, right? And there's, there's no, there's nothing like somebody picking up a phone and calling a UPS and telling them, hey, what, you know what, uh, I have uh, uh, Jimmy who had ordered um, some uh, item here and he, this is his address come. There's nothing like that is happening. This is all automation. So the automation is happening because the systems of of UPS or FedEx or US Mail or DHL they're all interconnected with the Amazon systems. 
So all they are, they are basically what is happening is the data, data is being, being shared, right? Data or the easy word is information. Information is being shared between what? Between systems. And I'm not going to uh, call it out as Amazon and eBay or for that matter, um, you know, Apple. Uh, it could be systems, basically any. So systems are interconnected these days. So when it comes to two systems connecting to one another, right? When we talk about systems get, connecting to one another, in the old times, you had these mainframes. So the mainframes, mainframes, mainframe one, mainframe two, the way they used to be sharing data is through a mechanism called EDI, electronic data, um, you know, interface or, or exchange or so that's how the data used to go back and forth. This is an older, everything is old. This is old, this is old, this is old, right? So even though this is being used in the industry today, if I have to put a percent, probably like one, one percent, or maybe, probably maybe less than that, or maybe, you know, very insignificant number uh, that is being used, right? So what is, how data moves today between the systems? So again, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it as a system. And this is going to be another system, right? We will have. So between the systems, the data today is is being moved through through APIs, right? Through basically, in other words, through nothing but web services. So web services in simple, and I'm not giving you any technical definitions here, right? Uh, I'm refraining myself today on day one to deal with anything technical. I just want to give you enough of idea today so that you that um, that um, confusion of what a web service is, what an API is, and all that should go away. At least you, your mind should be clear. And then starting from next class, we're going to be dealing very, very, in a very technical terms. So right now, <clears throat> when there is a need to share information, of course, information is going to be shared between Amazon and uh, let's say this is uh, uh, UPS, right? Information has to be sh uh, shared. The information, the data flows between the two systems if they are connected. So in order for the two systems to connect, right, the, the way you connect the systems today is using web services, right, using web services. And, and these are some terms that I'm using, right? So coming back to what a web service is, what is a web service? Think of web service as, as some, as some uh, code, as some code or as some program. Web service is nothing but a program, right? Okay. Now, depending on uh, who you are, this program is going to be different depending on a domain. I mean, business domain. So you can be telecom, you can be pharma, uh, you pharmaceuticals, you can be uh, healthcare, uh, you can be uh, public utilities, uh, you can be finance, you can be you know, just fill in the blank. You can be any industry. So it really doesn't matter who you are as long as you can understand what a web service is and how does it fit into the big picture. And then we will start to deal uh, on an individual basis. And then I will start to show you as how to start, uh, you know, uh, creating a project, how you go about uh, testing this, what is an interface, uh, you know, uh, how it gets exposed and all that. So we are still in, in our very infancy stage where we are discussing about what a web service is, right? Okay. So in terms of a web service, think about it, right? And I want you to tell me, let's say, here amazon is has to deal with ups right has to deal with ups so what do you what do you think what do you think amazon needs to tell ups what do you think amazon needs to tell ups the answer is number one it has to tell about you know customer information right who this customer is let's say it need not be number one 
right it could be part of the information is about the customer right customer name and customer uh, you know shipping address and all that number two is uh, what are we shipping so item item description so customer information item information right what is the item information you know details like if it is a tv you know how big of a tv is that 75 inches or maybe you know 21 inches or are you delivering a, a tennis balls i mean if it is tennis balls uh, i mean you probably are uh, telling them uh, weight wise or or whether it's a tv you're telling so some of the information the specs that you are passing is about the customer and about the item and about what where to pick up so the location location where to pick up pick up and where to drop off the location right so some information uh this amazon expects to pass to ups that is ups um, you know interested in now what is that information more information that it, it might be interested in as you can start to think about when do you want this item to be picked up the, uh, some people believe it or not they might be doing christmas shopping even now i mean crazy as they may but who knows i mean people are buying something if they find something on sale they're buying it and the shipment you know they might say that okay ship it on such and such date or whatever so there is a date of uh, you know uh, shipment and uh, you know stuff like that so anything related to that amazon has to has to supply that information right okay so the information flows from amazon to uh, to ups right now let's say it's the other way ups needs to know some information about uh what is what do we need to pick up from uh let's say uh, they are querying they are querying amazon and saying that from los angeles from la and uh, so this is the uh, state or city location and you give the date and date is august uh, 4th uh, 2015 uh, you're saying that give me a list of everything that i need to pick up from the la uh, in such and such date so he can ups can also question things now amazon has to provide some data amazon has to provide that there are 47 uh, uh, packages that we want to uh, and then these are the details of the packages and all that so each system can query the other system and then expect some 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 data back so here is the deal so in whenever you are you have multiple systems communicating between one another you have you have you have things flowing back and forth so let's say this is system a and i'm going to come to your question in a minute let me just finish this thought and then I'll come back system B now in order for them to share the information basically the the protocol protocol uh, are the set of rules set of rules are your questioning and answering should be done should be done or your messages should pass using a language called XML so I system a cannot say hello uh, how are you right um, how many packages do you have we are not kind of like talking in English we have to talk in a language called XML right and so we'll be seeing how much of XML you and I as a tester we need to know but we need to I'm trying to make you aware of what is coming ahead in this course since the information that is going to be sent back and forth that will be sent back and forth as an XML, right? So there is going to be a slight learning curve for us to pass, to understand, because uh, we have to know about XML. So we need to know a little bit of this XML language. Very easy to learn in few minutes. In, in fact, in few minutes, you will learn XML because there's nothing much there uh, for us to learn if we are using this SOAP UI tool because everything SOAP UI tool will do it. We just need to know some basics of it. So we will, we will know. <clears throat> So when it comes to passing the information, the information will be going as XML and the information, let's say if you are sending a letter uh, today, we don't do it. But uh, if you 
go back and please don't tell me you were not born uh, in the year 1995 because that would really uh, <laughs> upset me a little bit because uh, um, you know I cannot give you any examples if, if you were not born in 1995. I mean 1995 was the birth of the internet so before that um, people used to do things in a polite way, not that they don't do it in a polite way anymore. But, um, you know, we used to use uh, non-internet because it was not there. So, meaning, uh, if you have to send some something to somebody, like a check, we would write a check. And we would say pay to and whatnot. You sign your name in here. And then you put the check in an, in an envelope. And on the envelope, you will say from and somewhere you say two and you put a stamp and then you say that eh, we even you know occasionally we even do it uh, today well if you do it today then it's easy for me uh, to make you understand because a similar thing is happening here as well similar thing is happening whatever that xml is that is being passed that is being put into what is called an envelope right what is called an envelope and this envelope is called a uh, soap envelope now you would say that uh, i understood the part envelope right i don't know what is soap envelope but i understood the part envelope so you are saying that when information needs to be shared between the two systems the information should be written as xml and the information should be uh, put in an envelope and then send it across is that what you're saying i would say yes that's that's what i'm saying uh, but then i also said you have to use something called a soap envelope so what is this soap? We're going to come back to it, but just have that word in, in your head right now that uh, we will be using something called a soap envelope, right? Okay, so data is going to be, data is going to be packaged, packaged into an envelope, and this data is the XML data. The, that XML data is, is referred to as a message, right? So messages flow back and forth messages flow back and forth now who are you sending this message to system a is sending a message right message to to system b here right system a sends a message right and system b receives the message right system b receives receives that message right okay so likewise system b can also send the message and it will receive the message in here so back and forth messages are going back and forth all right okay messages are going packaged as written in xml packaged in the envelope right okay all right now that we have established some simple simple idea of what is happening in here now let's go a little bit deep into understanding what a web service is because right now i'm just throwing different things at you without even giving you the idea of what is a web service so far i just said that web service is just a program right a program now we're going to be going a little bit uh, uh, into deep into it in terms of web service is a program or a code right okay program or a code is written using a language right any programming language there are many languages there is java language there is c plus plus language there is c sharp dot net language there is a uh, python there is uh Perl, there is uh, ruby there is uh, you keep going right uh, some language that is not uh uh something that i did not mention here that doesn't mean that uh, the world is not using it and this is not necessarily in any particular uh, preference or particular order but these are the languages so web service is some code some code is some program written using one of these languages. So the developers or the programmers, they are going to create that web service. So what is that web service going to do? Any program, what does it do? It basically tries to provide a solution, provides a solution, right? Okay, calculator, is that a solution provider? The answer is yeah, 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 yes, it is a solution provider. Now, it it means different things to different people if i give it to uh, let's say uh, a, a two year old uh, he or she might just play with it you know spit on that they're drooling on it and then you know they will throw it they will break it they don't have any value for it right but this provides a solution to who 
probably to a fifth grader or seventh grader, or maybe to somebody like me <clears throat> who cannot add, uh, let's say, 147, 37, and 398, 94. I mean, it would be better if I use a calculator, even though I can add it, right? But I, it's better if I use a calculator. So I will also find a use of this cal. So calculator as an as an tangible thing that you could touch in your hand is providing a solution to whoever needs to use it, right? This web service is a program which is nothing but a solution that program will will be written by programmers and it will be providing some solution to whoever wants to use it so let's say there is a web service from ups right if i if i give it to uh my my grandmother and my grandmother uh she has a phd right i mean she retired now she retired and she's very old probably 92 years old, but once upon a time, she had a PhD and uh, she was a very popular woman, uh, you know, teaching so many things, uh, you know, back in my country. So uh, even though she's a very knowledgeable person, has a PhD and all that, uh, if I give a UPS web service to her, uh, even though, you know, this is of something value, but for her this is nothing right because not not a need for it not an interest for it so depending on what what a solution is you need to understand a solution is a solution for a business so depending on what that business is the solution will be provided accordingly so if we are dealing with ups a web service is some some code some program that will be dealing with this ups business right okay now we got to understand what is ups business so to understand ups business one of the examples of that is to ship a packet right okay to ship a packet so if i tell you if i tell you let me just come up with a uh, ship an item right ship an item ups will ship an item if you tell them ship an item what do you expect UPS, ups to call you to ask you rather so you'll say the what is the item so let's list what is the item right item description right and uh item quantity right and item item weight right uh, let's say uh, dimension so item uh length and item width, right? And let's say uh, uh, item uh, pickup location, item uh, drop off location. Let's say these are the things they are asking you, right? These are the things they are asking you, right? And once you provide, then what do you expect UPS should be? telling you when you give all of these details what do you expect you expect like how much it is going to cost you and how and when it's going to be the delivery right these two things so understand that programmers at ups they will be creating a, a program that will that will expect a, a user of this user of this program a user of this let's say a customer right whoever the customer the customer has to provide a customer user has to provide 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 what details and this will provide you some details back some details back right agree so this is nothing but this is nothing but a program right so for ups ups will be creating this code and if this code if they are using it locally for their own employees and not sharing with with the world then this is their own program but if they share this with the world then this becomes a service and this service they are sharing it over the web so it's a web service so what is a web service a web service is nothing but it's a program it's some code for any business that will <clears throat> take some that will take some details or the better word is that will take some parameters right it'll take some 
parameters, right? Details. And then, so this is input, input. So it will take input parameters and it will output back some other details. So it will output back whatever you want. So output, it will output some data, right? It will take input data and it will give you output data. So for uh, UPS, this is not the only web service they will be shipping an item, right? Ship an item. They will be like <coughs> book a book an order, cancel an order, or uh, expect the delivery date. There can be many, 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 many things, right? So for every little thing, you cannot be creating a web service for every little thing, right? So what you want to do is inside the web service, inside the web service, as you are creating these things, these things are nothing in, in coding, in programming, these things are nothing, but these are called functions. So a uh, web, or a, or a web service developer is actually creating web service, which is nothing but some functions he is creating. He is creating functions. So there's not going to be only one function, right? There are going to be many functions. So inside a web service, there will be one or more functions. Agree? Functions the developer would be creating. Functions and all that is used by, is used by, uh, language used by developers. Now, the stakeholders or anybody else, anybody else other than the developers, they should be referring to these functions, right? These functions as operations, operations, right? So now we are slowly building the vocabulary of a web service. A web service is nothing but it's some code, right? And eventually all this will go away and we will just be left with pure technical jargon when we are done with this like in a day or two you will be left with complete technical jargon right now i am slowly but surely uh, putting some english into it and then uh, some uh, you know keywords buzzwords and then at the end of this like one or two sessions we'll be done with the english part and we'll be remaining with just the pure technical definition of a web service right now understand that a web service is nothing but a code right a program right and and the program is nothing but a combination or a group of functions so a web service is nothing but some functions written by a developer to be shared by whoever wants to use that web service so <clears throat> in other words a web service is nothing but a group of collection of operations operations are functions so can these operations expect input parameter now you would say that what kind of a web service will it be if it will not take any input parameters? Now, uh, I would say, uh, let's say you are dealing with a um, time web service, right? Time web service. Now, you would say, what do you mean by time web service? I would say that you don't even ask that web service, just, just call that web service. How to call the web service, we'll, we'll talk about it. When you call the web, you're not even saying anything. You're just calling the web service and it is saying 946 New York, right? And 646 LA and 846 uh, Dallas, right? I mean, I just said time and it is returning me so many things. So we did not even said, what is the time in New York? If I say, time and then if i pass new york then it will give me this return me 946 so basically a web service is a program or for the lack of the better word a function or an operation that can take input parameters like description quantity da, 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 and return you back return you back with a response so in other words web service web service is some code right it expects it expects what it expects input parameter and it gives you back what some data back so to a web service in other words to a web service you are sending something right you are sending something to a web service and the web service is returning something out to you right so if you need to use the web service you can you can request send a request to the web service and the web service will send you a response right and that request and response is all data so we're gonna um, still come back and uh, 
ask, uh, see what's going on in here. Now, very quickly, um, let me take a step back and then ask you if you have any questions so far, because I have not covered anything. We're just chit-chatting here. We're just chit-chatting. But this chit-chatting is also important. So it need not be just me talking to you. If you if things are understandable, then it's fine. If not, you can ask me questions. Okay, so while you are typing a question, I will go ahead and I will ask you a few things, right? Okay, now in this, there's nothing uh, wrong in you uh, participating and answering me without even knowing anything. So here is a scenario. Here is a scenario, right? Um, I want to travel and I want you to listen to me. I want to travel. And today, in this time, right now, I'm asking you, right? I want to travel um, to London and I'm here in in New York. I want to travel in London, right? Um, and there are more than a dozen of you in here, right? It, just answer me if I have to book my website and I need an answer from each one of you. Just say something, just say something. I am. I want to go to London. I want to book my ticket to London. What should I do? What should I do? Say anything. You can say that I have a friend who can get you a ticket in London. Call me. That's also fine. But just tell me. Just tell me. Just tell me. What should I do? You can. You can type it. You can say, uh, go to, um, let's say, travelocity.com and book your ticket there. If you say that, I'll say, okay, I'll go to travelocity.com. Or if you say, go to priceline.com or go to americanairlines.com. Or... So basically, uh, the goal today is uh, if we want to do something, we are using the internet today. Don't you think that we are using the, we are using the internet. You go to your phone, you go to your phone, your phone, right? Your iPhone, your Samsung, your, 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 whatever your phone is or your tablet right or your 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 uh computer right they're all they're all what they're all uh some some devices these are devices each device is connected to the internet we are all connected to the internet right and depending on what you type in here or what you click in, in here or what you press in here, you will be going to over the internet to some to some server, to some server. And then that server will be returning some data. Depending on who you are, that data will be displayed, rendered to you on your device, whether it's a phone, whether everything is going to different servers uh, out there on the internet. Right. So if you want to go to London, so basically you would bring up a browser or you would go to you would if you have an app for Priceline or some travel site, the cheap tickets or something on your phone, you will bring it up. And then you when you bring it up, what do you do in there? Or when you bring up the browser on the Web page, what do you do in there? Basically, what you're doing is you are typing in some things like my, I'm leaving from this airport, leaving from leaving from so airport name right and going to going to this is the airport uh, uh i don't know maybe somewhere like the, the london heathrow so probably that's the code or, or what i don't know so and then you would say date of my travel is uh, 0804 2015 this is uh, leaving and this is return right uh 08 11 2015 and <clears throat> number of passengers one and you hit whether this is a phone whether this is so the idea here is you're passing information which is which is what which is this airport this is this this airport going to coming from two items this is three item third item fourth item fifth item now, whether it is going from your phone, whether it is going from your browser, whether it is going from the, it, these five things are going and, and going to that web service on the server. And then it is going to, inside the web service, it will take those five things, five 
data items, right? And then it will do God knows what the developer has to deal with, right? So basically, there will be probably will be a query to the database. So in the database, there will be some information like which is the cheapest fare and all that. And then it basically would send the information back in here. And then you see, so that is basically your search process. Then your booking process will go through. So for everything, this web server, because you have to get connected to mobile devices for this and that. So the web service basically does all that. So the web service code has been written there. So you are and my my job is to make sure that we are able to test that web service. So the web service is doing what? Providing a solution now to to the need of this business. The business is travelocity or the business is a uh, hot wire or cheap tickets. And their job is to make money by uh, basically selling tickets so they will take the data pass it to the web service the web service will will do a search and all that and then return some data back so web service bottom line will take input data will give output data our job is to find out if when we send JFK and uh, Heathrow Airport and this date and there what do we expect back what are we expecting back that flight uh, uh, you know um, price of the ticket and all that if the price of the ticket comes back uh, what what does common sense says uh, the ticket to london probably is like thousand dollars two thousand dollars now there will be a range right it has to be somewhere between depending on the season sometimes it's like cheap like four hundred dollars sometimes it's very expensive like thousand five hundred i don't think there will be two million dollars from new york to go to london if you if there is any website that is giving you two million dollar then you would say that what the heck it's stupid i mean you and i as as automation engineers we should not be saying stupid or what the heck we should be saying oh there is a bug there is a defect so companies whenever software is produced companies hire testers so that they save their face in front of the of 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 the public so that you know because they will be in big news out there if we say that oh traveler city has a a, a ticket uh, that is two dollars from here to london i i took the other extreme i said two million dollars how about two dollars it would be like you know a big deal in the industry or in the world because they would say that it would be all over in the news BBC would uh, do it, uh, Fox News, CNN, everyone, $2 on price man from tickets from New York to London, uh, big thing. I mean, so somebody got to pay that price, right? Because they did not hire the proper guy like you to do the testing of that web service. They're paying for it down the road. So that's why they want to hire testers like crazy who can do a reasonably good job of saving their face in, in or saving their money in front of uh, you know the people out there so that you know we don't have uh, uh, an application that uh, is is going to uh, cause a big huge havoc right so how can we do that so basically testers like you and i we will be going and then saving their money and time and their face by testing these web services so bottom line a web service provides data it takes input data it provides output data okay now with that said that was the most simplistic way of understanding a web service now let's say if if it takes input data and gives you output data and all that right which is fine now uh, can we take an example of it and can we uh, talk a little bit about that okay an example of that is uh right here um as simple example as it is um if i tell you if i tell you i have created a web service that can do math that can do addition okay right? that can do addition that can do subtraction if i if i have to create a web service like this i as a developer of a web service i would have written a function in java let's say right that function would be uh, public right and this is like uh, let's say void right add addition and and basically 
this is going to take how many numbers can you add let's say two so this is number one and this is number two so somewhere we will say that the sum of this is going to be number one plus number two so this is my simplest web service right now if you are working for nasa it's not going to be addition and number one and number two there is going to be a very complex web service that might be dealing with unknown things like what if we get hit by a rock on mars how my machine should deal with it it's a crazy web service right so i'm not expecting that after you finish this course you're going to go and work for nasa not that you know there's anything wrong if you want to but i'm expecting you would be working to you know test these web services for reasonable uh you know corporations that uh something that we could relate to most of the time and that is again let's say you're working for a finance finance brokerage finance brokerage like as an example um td ameritrade what does td ameritrade they do they trade right i mean they help it's a broker right they help you trade what are you trading you could be trading you know stocks or mutual funds or exchange uh, etfs or you know anything like that so basically what they do is they help you trade so let's say there is a, a transaction trade transaction what does the trade transaction take as an input it will take input like uh, you know stock symbol right right so it, you will say symbol stock symbol quantity how many you want to right quantity and this is uh, type so type of transaction is what are you let's say buying it or are you selling it right so that's the type of that right and let's say uh, you this transaction that you're doing you want to do it let's say uh, as a <clears throat> at the market rate or you want to do it let's say as you are shorting it or, or you want to sell it at a certain uh, rate or you want to you know wait for so things like that you would be passing information like that over here so when you're passing this information it's going to take that information and like in case of you are passing this information number one number two it was adding and then giving you the result here it has to take that and it has to uh, depending on buy or sell it'll do that and then it'll return something saying that successfully successfully executed executed your trade executed trade right if we get this message that means that okay everything went through and then it'll next part of it is it'll credit your account if you um if you are in the money if you made some money it'll add it to your balance if you lost money it'll uh, reduce from your balance you know, things like that that business logic will happen in here but for you to to call this web service you have to pass what the symbol the quantity the type and stuff like that right so th this is this is what this is an operation of a web service there can be hundreds of operation inside a web service this is the operation and for this operation to work you have to provide provide parameters to it and then it will return some data back right so a web service to work you have to send some information so now the question is how can you understand about a web service like what it will take what you are expecting it back where can you have an idea they will give you documentation right they will give you documentation how can you understand that documentation what is the expectations that you have to test how do you know how do you you know what do you get what do you pass so there are two ways of understanding that there is a technical documentation right that a developer might give it to you and that documentation is called wisdom web service description language wisdom doc so if they give you a wisdom doc wisdom doc is everything is made up in xml so when they give you a wisdom doc you when you look at a wisdom doc in the beginning your eyes probably will pop out because it's complete xml and pure xml too technical and all that what i will do is i will let you 
understand wisdom in 10 minutes right whatever the wisdom is in 10 minutes you will be able to parse the wisdom parsing is reading it to understand what it is and make some sense you should be able to i said 10 minutes uh 10 minutes in the beginning later on it will cut down to like five minutes and probably less than that right so you would say i have no idea of xml how are you saying that i will understand something without even knowing in 10 minutes the answer to that is right here here i'm just gonna uh tell you you don't know xml right who creates the there's a question like who creates the visual document uh, now visual document is created by the developers right they don't have to do anything it automatically gets created the fact that they write the code when they deploy the uh, what's my call uh, the web service onto uh, the servers whether it's a test server or whether it's a production visual gets created so they will give it to you. You will have the access to the visual. So they, they will give you the visual document. So a visual document, as I said, web service description are totally, totally about what? Totally about XML. You will have no understanding of it. I tell you when you look at it, right? When you look at it and to give you an example, um, I will show you a, a visual and I will also tell you, you will not have an understanding of what it is, right? Here is the visual and here is um this is the visitor right now you're looking at it you're looking at it and notice the way i'm scrolling down right if this is such big i keep i keep scrolling down keep scrolling down keep scrolling down keep scrolling down right such big I would say that how much time I said 10 minutes right you'll understand this in 10 minutes right okay so all this is xml all this is what you see here is XML. This is XML, all XML. Now you would say that I don't know anything about XML. How can I understand? I'll say that, yeah, I will teach you enough of XML that you should be able to understand it. Now, again, um, anything that I'm doing today, right? It is not technical. It is not technical, right? But it will take away the fear. It will take away the fear from you to deal with web services in future right these are simple tricks right that you have to know and you have to understand and this will make you confident it will not make you sweat otherwise when you look at that xml document you literally would sweat but after what i'm gonna show you right now um you will feel a little bit confident about it probably you will um take a lot more time than 10 minutes depending on uh you know who you are uh but usually 10 minutes is more than enough for you to understand it okay xml um we all we all know english we all know english there are some difficult words uh there are some easy words there are some uh you know but we manage right we manage i mean some of you uh might be interested in shakespeare uh and you read shakespeare right you watch shakespeare but i can tell you probably um, out of a dozen people who are here probably 11 of you or maybe all 12 of you um don't know much about shakespeare and still life is going on we are we are happy we are content with life and uh, so th there is there is no such thing as okay you have to know about shakespeare for you to be good in english right we can we can manage we can manage so this as a tester there is nothing like you have to know everything about xml to be a good you know uh, web service tester i mean the more you know the better it is but i'm going to give you enough of it so that you can get the job done you can get the job done so on day one i will introduce you to xml in a very very stupid way right i'll show you that this is a cat and it meows so i'm not gonna make you write cat 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 like 200 times right i'll just show you it's a cat i mean you know it meows and tomorrow when you look at that cat maybe you will remember that it meows or not but eventually if you keep looking at the cat one day you will so if you keep looking at you know xml one day you will get it 
and that's my goal in the next three four five six seven eight sessions i will make you keep looking at x at, at xml that you will get it but right now today i will introduce you to xml so what is xml i would say that um uh, oh by the way hang on for a second i have to connect my uh charger uh, otherwise it's gonna blow on my face right now hang on <clears throat> Sorry about that. I forgot to have my charger connected to my laptop. Mm. Okay, okay. All right, so we are good now. Okay, so uh, here it is. Um, Okay. Um, okay. What do you mean by that? Um, most of you, you would say that, oh, that is your name because I told you, I told you, right? Um, if I if I put what is that and I, I have no clue what I what I did there but then you would say that oh that's a name too why because I, I put it right here because that's a name too and if this is the name of a human do you think this is a human so you would say what do I know I mean the best thing is you were saying give me something more about it give me something more about it I don't know anything about it so so this is do you agree that this is some data some some information some information to some this might be a fruit or they they might say that oh maybe this is some uh, electronic uh, intelligent fan uh, because because they don't know they don't know what if if i if i say this is data right what if i surround this data surround this data right and if i say if i say And if I close this and say, now, do you do you know now that this wh whatever is is this a yell yell he take whatever that is that is a tester, right? Now I, I I said that is a tester because I did not wanted to use the word uh, uh, he or she because we don't know. But we know one thing that this is not a fruit, this is not a, a, a game, but this is an individual who is a tester, right? Now, uh, same goes in here. I can say that uh, uh, this is a, a tester. So now what we just did, we just, we had data, we had data, and we surrounded this data by some more information that describes this data. So XML, XML, XML has data and it has something that, that describes the data, right? In simple words, correct? Okay, so we have data and we have something that describes the data and that something that describes the data is inside these angle brackets, right? So this, what you see this, right these are these are basically what you see this these are called as elements right or nodes right so in xml 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 is is a data document data document right made up of nodes or elements right so xml has XML has nodes in it and it has elements in it. So XML, there is in XML, there is there is a parent node and then there is a child node, right? And then there is something called a root node. There is only one root node, only, only one root node. 
there can be many parent many children so the data basically is inside inside the data is basically inside these um, you know nodes okay all right now now that we have some idea about it if I say if I say this um, If I tell you that, um, if I tell you that, right, just to give you an example, right, and just, 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 I'm, I'm giving you some information and don't even worry too much about it just some information uh, yes. right and let's say and let's say uh, Now, if you look into it, I have scribbled, I have scribbled some XML here. If you see here, you are, you don't know much about it, but it starts to make a little bit of a sense that when you have a root node, when you have a root node right on the tab, uh, on on the top where it says soap, right, where it says soap, that is the very first node. That is called the root node. So you have a root node and then you have the child nodes inside it. Inside the body, you have something like A, the value of A is 10. You have something called B, the value of B is 20. And so basically what is here, we, are, we have an envelope wherein we have A and B, value of A is 10, value of B is 20. And all this is XML, right? Very crude XML, right? Okay, so if you remember, I said everything that you need to pass, uh, um, goes inside the XML, right? So this is how XML is going to look like, right? So coming back in here, and if you look into what we have, this is also XML, right? Lot of XML. What is this Visdal? Visdal describes, Visdal describes about what we have to send and what we have to receive. So if you see in here, there's a lot of information that tells us what we are sending, what we are receiving and all that what we are sending, what we are receiving, right? Okay, so I am not going to go inside it. We still go with that 10 minutes of uh, our time that we will be <clears throat> needing to understand this document, but we're gonna put it on the side for a little bit, right? Now, I will come back in here. All this time we have been talking about theory about uh, this uh, XML and this uh, web services and all that. Now. As we are going to progress in this course, I'm going to be talking more, talking more. But if you are just talking and not doing something, things becomes unattractive, uninteresting, right? So I want to, I want to balance. I want to make sure that it is interesting, as well as uh, interesting is when you perform some action, when you do something. If you, you know, when you start playing a game, it is much more interesting than just watching it. Right. If you can, I mean, if you can play, I mean, you know, if you are 700 pounds and if you cannot play, then you have to watch. Right. So um, whatever the game is. Right. So um, and <laughs> forgive me for that. Yeah. Uh, uh, I apologize. Okay, uh, basically, uh, if we keep talking about the web services and not working on it, it, it becomes uh, uninteresting. So I will give you a scenario. Fast forward. Let's say our training is done, right? You say that I just came into this training and you're talking about training done. Hypothetical. Okay, just, just scenario that I'm talking about. Let's say the training is done. And fast forward a couple more weeks, you're looking for a job and you I train you in such a way that you become excellent and then you are you got the job now day one right you are at, at work 
you are having a good time introducing yourself and blah 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 you know a couple more days pass now it's the crunch time you have to work right so they say that welcome uh, we want you to test this web service and this is um, even though we have a huge big portal right we have a huge big portal to test uh, but um, we have one of the web service uh, that we want you to get started with and uh, this is the payment processing right payment processing so uh, when uh, customers they come and then they buy all that that part is all taken care of we want you to test the web service for the payment processing <clears throat> so you would say okay payment processing um you would be like can you give me some documentation they say that well the documentation is there um this is this is the wisdom and then they give you the wisdom so this is exactly what they're going to do they're going to give you the wisdom and i gave you the wisdom right okay so here is the wisdom that i gave you so how what are you going to do with the wisdom and when you click on that you will notice that it is bringing this this here we are so you're like hmm what am i going to do with it hmm but then you you would have taken the training already so you should know what you should be doing so here is the deal when you get a wisdom 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 what wisdom does wisdom will will help you to do what it will help you identify right or know right identify or know know what know the operations of the web service to test now it will help you it will identify the operations of the web service to turn, to test now you would say ah, what is operations well we talked about what is operation right anybody what is an operation what is your understanding of operations now you would say that didn't you say that operations are nothing but the functions right functions functions so functions a developer creates so a developer can create if it is an e-commerce e-commerce company right and particularly this is something to do with uh, uh, payment payment processing so there might be inside the web service there might be not just one operation there might be many operation just to give you an example uh, sale might be an operation might be an operation right what else can be a, a, an operation uh, void right might be an operation right and um, authorization might be might be an operation operation means that operation means that it's a function the developer had created but this function this function will take some arguments or parameters correct that's what we have been talking all along right so now the question is okay if sale is an operation and it will take some arguments or parameters what are those what are those arguments correct what are those arguments right like for sale there can be a like okay credit card number credit card number can be an can be an can be a argument right likewise in order to process a credit card in order to process a credit card you have filled in your gas right um and you want to pay by the credit card you swipe it what do you think is going on the other side when you swipe think about it your credit card number right what else what else do you need to process a credit card oh on the phone what do they ask you oh sir can you give the expiration date can you read it okay expiration date is needed oh the back of the card can you give me that cvv2 okay we give that right so basically these are the things we have to provide right we have to provide and let's say how much money are we going? so if you have to enter that how much money are we so oh it is 399 dollars right and 21 cents now 
this is this is some value what it is amount to process let's say now i very conveniently because i can understand that it is going to be dollar so i said 399 and 23 cents what is the cvv2 is cvv2 uh, alphabet a b c d no what is cvv2 what is it? it's the back of the card how many digits are there well probably it depends on the uh, what card you have oh that means that the card type also ah card type right card type american express or uh visa or uh, mastercard you know so many things we have so basically these are all these are what what, what are these things what are these things these are arguments that you have to that you have to pass to an operation so inside that visitor i will know not one operation i'll know hundreds of operations i'm saying hundreds probably there are like three or four or 27 how many operations are there well how would i know i can only know if i know as how to read the wisdom so what is wisdom exposing to me wisdom is exposing to me the operations that i need to test there will be one or more operations and once i know the names of the operations then i am interested in the parameters that operations will take not just the parameters but also the data type of those parameters right like <coughs> cvv2 is that is that a string data type or is that a uh, an integer data type uh, or the credit card uh, expiration date what is the format of that should i be entering like that like that 2015 or should i be entering 15 or should i be what is the format of that data type name of the uh, parameters right and also the operate all that is in the wisdom now you would say what the heck man look at this how can i even find out all that how can how can i right how can i right okay so what i'm going to do is um usually you want to tie the horse in in front right of the carriage it's going to pull so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do something reverse I will have the horse in the back, meaning that this document, even though this should be the very first thing that we should learn, but I'll, I'll, I'll make you, I have given you enough of this information that uh, anything more that I will do right now, it will make the total class as a theory class rather than a practical class. So enough if I tell you that all this information can be found from here within less than 10 minutes, but now that you have the idea that you need that information you need all that information you know where to find that information how to find you don't know that's what i'm going to teach you in five ten minutes but this is the place so this is very important that you ask for wisdom or they give it to you okay all right if they don't give you the wisdom um no problem why because because you have a friend here who is the friend soap ui as the tool is the friend what soap ui does is soap ui says that i am your best friend i will make your life very easy just tell me what to do so you are aladdin and this is the genie so you got to know that you have to rub the rub the right rub what what do you rub for the genie to appear ah lamp right so this is your lamp now right so if you rub it in a nice way if you spit at it the genie is not going to come if you kick uh, probably it won't come you gotta rub it in a, the nice places and the good places and then the genie would appear so you got to know how to ask here and this will give you everything this will give you everything so here is the deal you know that what what you want to test is a web service right okay now you got to be knowing you got to be knowing believe it or not you got to be knowing right um you got to be knowing the a b and c of the web service you'll say 
what is A, B, C? How about D, E, F? Oh, I'll say that, you know, people, they don't even know A, B, C of anything. And then, so you know how it is, like A, B, C means like, you know, you should know. It's, it's not like A, B, C stands for just A, B, C. They mean something. So A is you should know the address. B is you should know the binding. And C is you should know the contract, right? So when you know the A, when you know the B, and when you know the C, A, B, C, you are ready to test the web service. But how to get the A, B, C, right? Okay, I'm going to start with A. A is the address or the location of the web service. So where to find the location of the web service? If you know as how to read this, you'll find the location of the web service in three seconds. Three seconds, I said, not minutes. Three seconds, right? That's the A, right? If you know A, B, C, that will be fine. So I said 10 minutes for the whole document, right? But in three seconds, you would know the A. And A is the most important, which is the address of it, right? So here is the deal. Right now, I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm gonna not show you how to read that document. Uh, not today. I'll show you in tomorrow's class. But we are coming to this genie, right? So let's do it. We will seek this genie's help. To seek this help, to to help uh, to get the help from the tool, we're gonna ask in the right manner. So we will say that I have to create a project. So you go far, and you will say I want to create a project. Okay, there are two types of project: SOAP project and REST project. So as I told you, one is the XML based, the other one is REST based. So we're going to be talking about the differences and all that as we progress further in this course. Now, any one of you who is in a rush to do this, uh, you can watch the videos from the previous classes that we have already shared with you. And I'm talking about the registered students. And for those of you who are sitting on the sidelines, uh, you will see after today's uh, session, hopefully you will see the light and uh, you would decide uh, if you want to join this course. Uh, uh, or not, um, because uh, some uh, like the way I I do things, and some uh, think that uh, it's too much of talking and a uh, little bit of work. Uh, but on day one uh, and day two, this talking is important. Uh, starting from day day two onwards, uh, a little bit of uh, the first 15, 20 minutes, I would talk on day two as well. After that, it's it's 98% hands on, no talking, just doing. Just do it because I would have laid out the foundation by that time. Day one, it is very tricky to to lay out the plot in a manner that you can understand and then you could you could relate to it without getting too technical and all that. So I do a lot of talking on day one, right? Um, for some, they they hate it. They say that ah, only talk, nothing happening, right? Anyway, so you should decide whether you want to enroll into this course or not after we finish this session today. So let me get to work. So we are going to create a project. The project that we are going to create, you, you would at least know whether you are testing a REST service or a, or a SOAP-based web service. So in this case, it's a SOAP-based web service, which is an XML web service. So I'm going to start this. Okay, here it's going to ask you, Okay, give me the name. Give me the name of the project. Or let's say this project, I want to call it uh, payment processing testing. That's the name of the project. Then the second question it asks is, uh, where is the WSDL? Give me the WSDL. So we will give you, WSDL is the location. It, WSDL, it will give you the location of where the WSDL is. So, um, all of you will get will get registered students will get the visitors here are the visitors that we will be testing all these visitors i'll be giving you so i'll be giving you these visitors right now i have posted the visitor so you you'll be taking for you to do the uh, assignment i already posted the visitor so the same visitor i'm posting it here right i post it here okay name of the project then i give the visitor and this is that wisdom, all technical jargon. Now, let's see how the tool gets information from the wisdom. What kind of information you get from a wisdom? Let me ask you. And, and I want you to tell me what kind of information do you get out of a wisdom? You would say that, ah, we get A, B, and C. Didn't you just said address binding and contract without knowing what is address binding and contract? Then I would say that, oh, in that case, you should know that from a wisdom, you should get uh information uh about about what 
about your uh, your web service operations right operations what those operations are and all that so you would get it so let's see if i go in here and here it says that okay just all this default value just take it like that so if i hit enter now notice it is connecting connecting and what i get here is what i get here is <clears throat> what i get here is this is my anything i click here in the bottom here in the bottom here it'll tell you what i am dealing with what i'm dealing with in the bottom here right so um if i go and click on this one if i click on that one right so you will see that in the bottom it will tell you so if i go and click on this what is this <clears throat> these are two see that green things these are two and when i click on that it is what it is the interface this is the interface of what of the project that we are working on this project which is the payment processing exposes to me the interface 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 basically has information about the web service right so if i expand i have the information of the web service and what is there inside a web service a web service is nothing but a group or a collection of of operations so if i click on this ah this is an operation if i click on this that's an operation if i click on the sale that is an operation so inside an interface which is nothing but a part of my project is exposing the interface of the web service it is nothing but all my operations so each operation inside it inside each operation i have i have this is the request and when i double click on the request watch on the right side when i double click on the request i see what i see here is this too too small for you to see right now but i see what is called a what is called i copy it and i will put it in a envelope uh, in a uh, notepad what you see there is if you see here this is this is what i said was an xml right all this is about your envelope opening of a soap envelope and closing of a soap envelope all this is your information about information about what about this sale sale is an operation and for the operation for sale to work i have to send some information to the server the information that i have to send goes inside the envelope the soap envelope and what is there that goes inside the envelope basically it goes now i have to increase the size of it <clears throat> a little bit <clears throat> um let me just close it um let me just close and open it because uh, that's what it takes for it to take the settings uh, uh, and then it'll open up uh, nicely i did not save it so i will let it go and we'll save it one more time we'll i'll just use it one more time <clears throat> so i start off the tool and we are going to test that payment processing thing. So you need to have the wisdom. So once we get the address of the wisdom, then we're gonna start the project. So here we go, file, new. Here, I'll give it a name, payment processing testing. Here is the, oh, I <clears throat> is the thing and we will connect 
And once I connect, right, I need to look into this sale. And that's slightly bigger than before, right? 16. I hope um, this is this OK to your eyes or you want it a little bigger than this? I, I think it's OK right now, right? OK, so <clears throat> if you need to bump it up, you can go to file. You can go to preferences, right? And you go to editor settings. And in the select font, you could bump it up to, let's say, 20, right? Now, it doesn't take it when you do that. You got to close it, and then you have to open it back, right? So uh, right now, I'll just leave it as is, right? I mean, 20 is, is bigger, but then I'm going to leave it like this. Okay. Now, <clears throat> for the web service to work, you have to basically find out if the addition is working or not. Then you have to send two numbers, right? Um, Eh, let me just do that one more time. Sorry about that. So uh, for any web service to work, if it is addition, if there's an addition web service, they want to test you the web service, and they say that it will take two numbers to add. So you have to send those two numbers. And if, they are, if it is sending you the return as an addition of the two, then you're good. So uh, I would say payment processing testing right you come in here do that do that right it is connecting and let me just close this and come over here and um, just look into the sale and do that it should be much bigger now yeah I'm not gonna bump anything any more than this so that's that okay okay so if you look into it now let's understand this whenever you you see something big and it is bothering you the best thing you do is go to the top line and collapse it so now you're not scared because it's just one line right so if you look at it this one line what is it telling you it's telling you when you see, when you look at this and it says that soap uh envelope and then it gives you some details and all that if you see a plus you that means that you you can expand right and after you expand you see that the these are called elements. So first element is soap envelope. Just just have it in your mind. Then it is header. Have it in your mind. Then it is body. The most important is after the body, whatever is coming up, that is the operation that we are testing right now. So if you look at the sale, sale is the operation that we are testing now. If it was addition, for example, this would say addition, right? And to addition whatever we want to pass that will be coming this is the sale and this is the end of sale and anything that we are going to pass will be coming here right will be coming here so this is called the the thing that i have highlighted that is called the payload p-a-y-l-o-a-d payload <clears throat> so that brings us to an interesting uh, point what is payload payload is nothing but the actual data that will be that will be passed to the web service so payload here is one two three four five items right now notice that if it is open then see this this is close this is close this is close this is open and so we don't know what is the value of this this question mark here says that that is the placeholder you can pass a value here so now from your documentation from your requirements they will tell you here strcc will take a 16 digit long number and then they will give you some examples of it so let's say it will take this 16 digit long number right that's one so this is the parameter that you're passing then it will tell you your document will tell you this str exp month will take a two digit so between 0 1 and 0 12 as an example because it's a month then cvv2 will say that it will take a three digit any number between 0 0 1 to 999 so let's say this three number it will be year it will say that it is a two digit year right anything from 00 to 99 let's say 
So let's say if I do uh, 0, 1, that would have been 2001, right? So uh, technically it should fail, right? But right now we are not going to look into all that. So we, we will take a happy path scenario. What is a happy path scenario? Happy path scenario is everything you are putting is, is the right information. So let's say the year of expiration is, is in future, <clears throat> 2016. And then this is the amount. The amount that you're putting is, again, they will give you a number. With, it cannot be like 1 million. So it will be some number, $6, uh, $646.25, right? Okay. So now what the genie had done for you is it let you not go through all this hassle of finding out what are the binding and contract and all that. It did everything for you by by reading that document and then giving you this this xml snippet so your job was not to write this not to write this if the tool was not there your job would have been to write all this to say but now you don't have to you just have to fill in the blank you just have to fill in the question mark wherever the question mark is you have to fill in there and once you fill in you are you have to send this information to the server now we will talk about the architecture in the next class architecture is um, the web service, how it is deployed and what kind of web servers we are talking about, whether it is Apache or, or, or whether it is WebSphere, WebLogic, Internet Information Server, JBoss, uh, you know, different things. We'll be talking about that. And then we'll be talking about many things like HTTP logs, right? See that? There's already something in here. How did we got in here? Uh, SOAP UI logs. There's already so much, so many things in here. How did we got in here? What's a memory log? What is an error log? What's a jetty log? And we'll talk about all of these things as we progress further into this course. Right now, my main focus right now is to do what? To make sure that when you send it to the server, what kind of response you, you receive. Because in your web service testing, it's all about sending the information to the server and expecting a data back and then confirming to your your assertions and seeing that yeah it is it is an expect expected value is such and such and the actual value is within that range of the expected value hence the test case is a pass right so uh, how do you send the information and how do you expect so here is the is the envelope that you prepared you and I, we did not do anything because the tool prepared it, right? So you just have to send the data. So this is the message that we have to send. So coming back to the beginning here, I was telling you all about like uh, you have to, this is what is happening. There is a system A, there's a system B. So here, the SOAP UI, we, we are using the tool SOAP UI, make believe that we are that system A and we are sending this information to system B. What are we sending? We can send customer information. We can send item information, the weight, the, the where is the location, all that, depending on what it is. Right now, we, since we don't have a system A, so we will we will use a testing tool called SOAP UI. So SOAP UI acts like a client, acts like a client. So we are going to send the information. So when we send the information, the information needs to be packaged as, see here, all this is XML. It has to package as XML and it needs to put in an envelope. And this is the message that we are sending. So system A, which is SOAP UI now, is sending this information to system B. And system B will send some information back again in XML. And then we have to figure it out as what it is, right? So that's basically what we are going to do. And in there, depending on what this operation is we might be sending item quantity this the operation here is sale now this is called sale and the data that we are sending is cc uh, uh, credit card number and expiration month and cvv2 all that we are sending it right as you can see so how to do all that i mean the tool is doing everything for you so here you are ready with it now you send it across when you send it across ah here is the response so response again came back in an envelope, the body of the envelope, and the response is the response for the sale request. So the sale request response is the result that is coming back is your transaction, your sale transaction 
for the credit card number that we sent did, 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 was approved was approved uh, with the an approval number of they sent you an approval number <coughs> and the transaction is transaction number is that so that so we have to we have to capture this we have to capture this and down the road we have to save it in excel and we have to basically be ready for the next number now do you think i will come here and type the next number again that becomes more like a manual testing and manual testers also these days uh, they you know basic manual testers they teach this tool and then so they don't know abc's uh, of it because uh, you know somebody teach them this tool and they just keep coming in here and putting a different number putting a different number putting it but that be, still becomes a manual test we don't want manual testing this is basically this is this is an automated testing tool so we have to be doing automation so how can we do automation in here now we have to go in here right and if you see here you go in here and we have to start to do many things many things in here how can we do automation the first things first we have to basically make we have to make what is called a a test test suite so i have to create a test suite and i have to create test cases and to that i have to pass data coming from excel and then receive the data coming from the web service write some logic into it using some groovy code and say that yes this test is passed this test is fail this test is passed this test is fail you have to do all that and that's exactly what we are going to be learning in the next seven classes all automation okay to begin with to begin with let me just not save anything to begin with again um our job will be as a web service tester we got to make sure that we test all the operations that are exposed by a web service in order to make sure what operations are exposed by a web service we have to look at the interface how do you get the interface you will use <clears throat> soap ui as a tool to bind bind to the address so you will bind to a address to see the contract and the contract is okay there are going to be 14 operations inside n web service the interface exposes 14 operations each up I'm, I'm using the number 14 i'm just throwing out that number each operation will have a request and that request is made up of a soap envelope and inside that soap envelope i have to pass i have to pass data and when i package that message and send it across i will receive another message which is the response response is nothing but the result of the operation that i tested and then based on the data i receive i will look at the assertions and i will make the test case a pass or a fail that is it for now for today okay i've been talking for a good two hours now i will ask you before we close the shop today now now that you have the idea of what we are getting into <clears throat> i want you to tell me if you have any questions about anything what we did today anything right okay now uh before i take your questions uh i will uh briefly show you <clears throat> that there are a <clears throat> lot of <clears throat> web services that we we're going to be working on just to give you an idea there's an approval credit approval system that we'll be working on and and in two seconds you will get little more idea that any web service that you are going to test is going to be something like this so you're going to open up the tool this is the open source and i have so far covered uh two three four percent of uh of soap ui tool 
I, I covered two, three, four percent of it. There's still 95 percent to be covered. And that's exactly what we will be covering in the next seven classes. Uh, 95 percent of it. Just to give you the idea, uh, I showed you very basic interaction with the tool. Uh, automation, we will start tomorrow uh, or actually in the next class. So to repeat again, so we go in here, create a SOAP project. And here I will just say uh, credit credit approval uh, testing, right? And this is the visitor <clears throat> without knowing the interface and all that. Here we go. And I have, if you see, I have this as the, as this is the interface. If I go in here, this is the credit card approval application. And if I go in there, look at the request. And in the request, if you see here, wow, we have something more here. Now, you have never seen this before, but here inside the SOAP header, I have some more information I have to pass, right? So th these are called um, subscription web services. So you have to test sometimes the subscription web service. The web service, you, you cannot be passing anything to it you because this is the actual body. In the previous, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in the previous uh, example that I've shown, I showed you inside the body is the payload. The payload is everything you want to pass. So for the credit approval, this is the credit approval. You have to pass. This is the pre, pre AC. So now you are like, what the heck is pre AC, right? So that documentation uh, will help you. In this case, I'll tell you the pre AC is the pre approval code. So you, you will get, let's say a pre approval code. And this is customer name, right? Uh, customer name and this is oh I'm not gonna give you my social security number so five 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 right and of course I'm not gonna give you my date of birth so this is zero one zero one uh, 1971 email address let's say training right at gmail.com and this is the loan amount I'm looking for 500,000, right? Loan period, how, how many months? Let's say 60 months. 60 months? Come on, what are you talking about? Who is going to pay five mil, five, half million dollars in 60 months? Let's make it a car loan. So usually 50,000, right? 50,000 you want to pay it off in like 60 months. A monthly income that we have, let's say, is <clears throat> 5,000. <clears throat> so I am passing some data to it. But see what response it is going to get because the username password I'm keeping in empty. So if I send it across, it comes back. Says, oh, I don't like it. it. Says comes back. I don't like it. So this is called so forth. So when you have messages coming back and forth, you have to parse. You have to parse the data. Make sure that it is not a so forth. If it is a soap fall, then you have to see where the because you have to you cannot give this to the developer saying that oh it's a soap fall. No, you have to understand why it is giving you this, why it is giving you. So now you have to start reading the messages and understand. So if you see here, the the uh, server was unable to read the request, right? Okay, of course. Why? Because it says that there is an error in the XML document. There's an error in the XML document. So system format input string was not in a correct format. So basically, we were supposed to send some information. We did not send. So all that we will be covering in the future classes, so how to test it. So this is the loan approval. For the loan approval, you have to send some user uh, ID, password, subscription ID, and all that. Then send the information. Then only it will give you something back. If it is not, how to test it. So all that I'll be showing you in the future classes. So uh, that's about it for me uh, for today. Now, uh, if you have any questions, feel free. Ask me if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, we are pretty much uh, going to call it a day. Can we show where we can find the Visdal file you upload? Um, we will be sending you all the Visdals. Uh, uh, this is what I have to do now. Uh, there are a little over a dozen, 13, 14 people in here. So what I want you to do is uh, uh, all the registered students, right? Like say as an example, Jimmy, right? Uh, we will not send you an invite for the next class 
uh, unless we receive from you an email saying that I am a registered student. Uh, I already paid for this course. You don't have to give any more details, just that. And I will be attending this August batch. We want you because the reason we, we are asking that is because people will come <clears throat> take one or two classes uh, and then disappear and then come back after four months and say that, oh, I was like sick or I was like uh, on vacation or I was this. We don't want anything. So we want a commitment from you that you want to be a part of this batch so that you can we can send you all the details for this batch. So I'm using Jimmy as an example. Every one of you, Greg, you are a, a, a student. You want to and um, you know register, or uh, your manager already did, or your colleague already did. But I'm I'm saying like uh, you want to attend this class, you should be sending an email. This is the email address where you should all be. Whoever are paid members should be sending it so that we can send you the invite in the next class. Training right at uh, gmail.com training right at gmail.com just send in um, after we finish this session um, you send uh, an email saying that um, I want to attend this August batch and then we will send you the invite for the next class that's the only time we need your your email after that we don't because uh, you are giving us an authorization that you want to attend this now for those of you who are sitting on the sidelines um, well, uh, you have an opportunity to come and then take this class or uh, continue to sit on the sidelines. Um, either of the two decisions are okay. Uh, so you be the judge, you decide what you want to do. All right. Um, with that, I'm going to close the shop here uh, unless you have any more questions. Uh, Jimmy, we will be sending you the details of the visual document and all that. Uh, 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 either today or tomorrow, we'll send it to you. Uh, anybody else, any other questions? Okay, if not, that is it. Uh, I will send the invite to only those of you who will write to us between now and uh, the next class, uh, which is on Thursday, um, that you want to attend it. Even though you are a paid member, I will still not be able to send you unless I hear from you. All right? Okay, with that, I let you go. Thank you so much for being here. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing you back on Thursday, 8.30 p.m. Have a good one.